This is Jack and Ori Jr. Hello, I'm Martin. This is the story of me and my dog, Roo, and our incredible journey across America. This is how our adventure started. We were going to America in search of Roo's grandfather, an incredible dog by all accounts. The last Roo heard of him, he was a cowboy's dog and lived somewhere in the Wild West. Of course, I only have Rue's word for that. It is not easy to find the Wild West anymore, but the uh, Get Lost Travel Agency were most helpful. They sold me two tickets for a 14-day tour travelling on a Greyhound bus to some of America's best attractions. I borrowed Uncle Freddy's new golf trolley to carry our equipment in. When our plane landed, our tour of America began. But... There was a dreadful mistake. The tickets I booked were for the famous Greyhound bus, not a bus full of Greyhounds. Roo is not usually good with other dogs. To distract Roo from the Greyhounds, I got her to describe her grandfather. First, Roo said he had a big nose, which is not much use at all. Then she said that he was hairy, but most dogs are hairy. I asked her to be more specific, and she said that he had a big tail. Really, it is useless. But we arrived at a place called the Silver Whippet Racetrack. Apparently, the Greyhounds were taking part in a race that afternoon. We stood right next to the track to watch the race. The driver's dog, Slow Coach, looked quite fast and came out of the trap with a good burst of speed. I had to hold Rue very tight as she was squirming about in my arms with excitement. Old Slow Coach was miles ahead of the rest of the field when Roo leapt out of my arms and pounced on the electric rabbit as it flew past. She hung on for ages. I could hardly bear to watch as she whizzed round the track. Then the electric rabbit short-circuited and Roo fell off. The next day we went to a theme park called Rabbit World. A man in a rabbit suit met us at the gate and took our money. The place was crammed with dogs and we had to queue for a long time to get on the rides. My favourite was a roller coaster ride called the Big Hopper. We climbed into a boat shaped like a giant carrot and then shot down a series of white water rapids. At the bottom we were catapulted across a lake. Roo loved it and went on it three times. She said it was her favourite place in the whole world. I eventually managed to drag her away, only to find that our bus had gone without us. It is very difficult to hitchhike with a dog. Every car that did slow down was soon driven away at high speed when people saw Roo with me. Hey, down. I decided to hide her behind the golf trolley and this seemed to work. Because a large camper van stopped and a very pleasant couple called Bob and Miriam invited me to ride with them to the Grand Canyon. We pitched the tent in a clearing and made our evening meal. Rue crunched on a bone under the table and came out only to tell us about her grandfather, about how he had lived in a cave with an old bear and in the end he smelt so bad he could clear out a whole town just by walking through it. I told Rue that Bill and Miriam did not want to hear any more horrible stories about her grandfather. This caused her to go into a sulk and before I could stop her, she had slunk off into the forest. I hoped she was all right. I'm pleased to say that Rue did come back, followed by two very angry skunks. <laughs> oh. They made a dreadful smell and most of it managed to get on Rue's coat. She tried to get it off by rolling on my clothes. I had to wash her in the lake. I took her back to the camper van and explained to Bill and Miriam about the skunk incident. 
Now, I do not know what I said to upset them, but they rolled the windows up and drove off very fast. <sighs> Leaving us behind. I did not sleep well that night. Something was rummaging about outside the tent. I was certain that it was a bear. A roo slept through the whole thing. But in the morning, what a mess! The next night I was awoken by an almighty crash. The bear was back. I cannot describe my joy when I saw that it was not a bear, but my own dear Roo. She was very muddy and her coat was in a terrible mess. She told me about her fight with the bear. What a brave dog. When morning came, I ventured out, armed with a golf club in case the bear was wounded and ready to attack. There was no dead bear stretched out on the ground. Instead, lying on its back in the midst of much wreckage was a small duck. I lifted the duck up and it gave a feeble quack. This brought Roo out of the tent. When she saw the duck, she bolted back inside. It has all become very clear to me now. A bear indeed. Mm. Next day, we came upon One Horse Town. Now, one horse is not very big. I found a saloon called Grogman's, a general store and a diner called The Hungry Horse. We took a room over the saloon. The owner charged me two dollars extra for Roo and fifty cents for the duck. Next morning, I was woken by the sound of many hooves. I staggered to the window to see a big herd of horses galloping up Main Street. Now these horses were a complete nuisance. They called themselves the riderless horses. The old sheriff got so fed up chasing after them that he moved away and opened a cat food shop in Catville. Now one horse had no sheriff and the riderless horses could run riot all day long. That evening there was a big fight outside the hungry horse. It went on for over an hour and then suddenly they stopped and went inside for something to eat. Then they came out and started all over again. Roo watched the whole thing from the balcony and at one point jumped off and joined in with it. Next day, bad news. The riderless horses elected Roo as the new sheriff. I thought it was ridiculous. Roo said her breed was the obvious choice, being renowned as sheriffs. What nonsense! There are police dogs, it's true, but I have never heard of a sheriff dog. Rue was not even a very good sheriff. I'm afraid the position went to her head. She spent most of the time swaggering up and down Main Street, followed by the duck, who seems to have appointed itself her deputy. How can a town be governed by a dog and a duck? The next day, more bad news. Rue was no longer the sheriff of one horse. She got sacked for letting the riderless horses rob the hungry horse. It was rumoured that a dog and duck were also seen carrying food out of the diner. Worse, she was now considered an outlaw and there was even a wanted poster of her outside the saloon. It was hard to recognise it as Rue, as someone had drawn a moustache on her. We sneaked out of town. We travelled all day and at last found ourselves inside a cave. It was snowing and the sound of the wind in the trees was lonely and terrible. Rue and the duck snuggled beside me in the sleeping bag. I had no idea where we were, lost in the wilderness of America, I felt a little scared, but I could feel Rue beside me in the darkness. I was with my dog and I was happy. As we lay in that cave by the dying embers of the fire, Rue whispered that she wanted me to sing her a special song. I took her in my arms, as I have done since she was a puppy, and I sang to her, 
I have a dog and her name is Roo. Bet you five dollars she's a good dog too. Yes, I have a dog and her name is Roo. She's the best old dog I ever knew. I just finished the first verse and was going to sing the bit about all the rabbits that she had chased when I thought I heard music on the wind. Roo and the duck could hear it too. There. I have a dog and his name is Blue. I bet you ten dollars he's better than Roo. Yes, I have a dog and his name is Blue. He's the best old dog that I ever knew. We scrambled out of the cave as fast as we could and looked out across the clearing. There, seated on a fallen pine tree, was an old man strumming a banjo. At his feet was an old grey dog. Roo started to bark, and the old dog looked over and began barking too. Well, I've never seen Roo so happy. She ran round and round in circles and then sprang across a stream towards the old dog. The two dogs jumped on each other, rolling and tumbling in the snow, licking each other's faces and wagging their tails so much that I thought they might take off and fly. We had found Roo's grandfather, or Old Blue, as he liked to be called. The old man, whose name was Ted, reckoned that Old Blue was 15, which is very old for a dog. Old Blue interrupted and said that he was exactly a hundred years old, but I think that might have been in dog years. At last, Old Blue grew tired and lay down to take a nap. Now I know where Roo gets her snoring from. For the next few days, we hardly saw Roo and Old Blue at all. They had a lot of dog stuff to do, it seems, and spent a long time digging in rabbit holes. I liked it there, but I began to wish I was back home. The snows began again, covering the whole wood in a thick white blanket. That evening, I said I wished we had a telephone so that we could call up the rescue services to come and get us. Old Blue said he could call them without a phone. Really, what nonsense! I went to bed. Roo and Blue went outside to send their messages to the rescue services up against a tree. The next day, I woke up to the sound of much barking. The shack was surrounded by rescue dogs. We'd been saved. Good old Blue. A police dog took all our details and said that a helicopter was on its way to fly us to Los Angeles. Ted promised to look after the duck for us, and the duck seemed more than happy to stay. I thanked Ted for his hospitality. A tearful goodbye followed. Old Blue explained to Roo that he was never far away from her, no matter where she was. All she had to do was bark, and he would come and find her. This made her feel a lot better. Then they chased each other around in a circle for the last time. I think that must be a dog's way of saying goodbye. At last, all our farewells were made, and the helicopter landed beside Ted's shack. Old Blue and Ted watched as we climbed aboard. The pilot told Ted and Old Blue to stand back, and then he started the engines. As we pulled high above the trees in the helicopter, I could see Old Blue barking and running around in the snow. He seemed to have written something in the snow with his tracks. It took a moment for me to work out what it actually said. I love Roo. And so do I. See you soon. <laughs>